Hey, what's good, my fellow masters? Well, the expected Thanksgiving campaign for 2024 was just announced, and you all know what that means. More SQ to be gained, and more servant banners to tempt us out of those SQ, and then some. So, here is a brief look at the campaign features and which servants will be in the banner this year. The Thanksgiving campaign this year will run from November 21st and last until the end of the month on the 30th. There will be a special crude login bonus held during that period, and the goodies offered are 1 silver and gold apple, 10 5 star embers, and 6 quartz. Log in 5 times during the campaign to obtain all of these rewards. Another special login bonus features 2 commemorative 4 star craft essences, fragments of the moon, and a bouquet of dazzling roses. The former provides a bonus of 50 master EXP when a quest is cleared and the latter 50 mystic code EXP. Both CEs have beautiful art of our beloved Umu Saber, Nero Claudius. Moving on to gaining some more SQ, there will be 10 campaign-related limited master missions. Completing them all will reward a combined 10 quarts. All fairly simple tasks, clear up to 3 main quest nodes from either Part 1 or Part 2 story arcs, run through any of the training ground quests and any of the ember gathering quests 5 times each, defeat 3 servants, 30 non-servant enemies, and 5 wild beast enemies. Have a servant in your party with the earth attribute and clear any quest three times. And finally, just clear all of the limited missions. We also get an appropriately festive change to the My Room section of the game, which I'm using as a backdrop for this video. Then for the duration of this campaign, all AP costs for the Ember Gathering and Training Ground quests will be just half the usual amounts. And subsequently, all of the quests will be available regardless of which day they are usually restricted to. Now, I don't know about needing embers after all of the lotto farming, but stocking up on class pieces and monuments from the training ground quest might be good. For me, pieces tend to get used up rather quickly. For enhancements of both servants and craft essences, the chance for super and great success will be tripled during this Thanksgiving campaign. Something much better than the LB7 pre-release, which only offers double and only for servants and is restricted to those that cleared the LB6 prologue. Good news if you were looking to get an art-centric mystic code and missed out on the last time one was offered. Memories of the Lunar Sea, which you may have noticed in your Rare Prism exchange, will be made free in the RP shop. There is a condition though, and it's to clear the final act of the Seraph main interlude. Once you do, then you can pick up this mystic code with no need to spend Rare Prisms. And if you already spent the Rare Prisms beforehand to obtain this mystic code, then those will be refunded once you clear the final act of the Seraph main interlude, assuming you haven't already. Skill 1 of this MC is a targetable one-turn arts buff, Skill 2 is a targetable crit star generation buff, and Skill 3 is a one-time bluff block for one enemy. Now, for the accompanying banner we've all come to anticipate every year at this time, or is it Dread? One of the rare occasions where our Clairvoyant skill is useless. For those that are trying to save for a future servant, it's usually with the hope someone you really want doesn't show up on the Thanksgiving banner. Well, here we have it. Read them and weep, because I kind of feel like a few watching will be groaning in frustration. First up, the main feature on the banner is the limited SSR Saber Nero Claudius Bride. This 5-star Saber version of our Umu Waifu is a single-target arts unit, and more than that, Nero Bride is a pretty good support unit as well. Before Castoria came along, it was common to find Nero in a support role for arts teams, with her targetable 30% NP battery, significant NP generation buff, and an equally potent targetable attack buff. Umu Bride can still bring quite a bit of value to a roster. Plus, she also possesses a targetable damage increase against target with the Sky attribute, or otherwise known as the Heaven attribute. And as a single target saber, Nero Bride is one of the higher damaging ones. So she's a pretty good support unit with offensive anti-lancer and anti-sky attribute capabilities. But as good as I think she is, if you were targeting either Castoria, Oberon, or Koi and Sky and Light in order to build up your support units, then just stick to that plan. But if you like the idea of a pretty good ST saber with support utility, then she is a good unit to have, assuming you didn't have any specific servants targeted in the near future. On the other hand, if you're definitely interested in acquiring Nero Bride, but just not at the moment, then she has a number of banners in the future. February 2025 and 2026, May-ish of 2025, and October 2026. 
the next limited SSR in the banner rotation should not really be that much of a surprise to veterans of the game. The single target Quick Lancer Skaha has always been something of the face for the Thanksgiving campaign and a regular on these banners, which kind of makes her seem a bit less scarce when compared to other limited SSRs. But that does not mean she's not good, because she is. Skaha hits super hard. Her NP damage is second only to Enkido among ST Lancers, and she does especially potent damage against divine and or undone enemies. A skill rank up next May makes this aspect of her kit even better. Her main steroid quick buff is targetable and has a 20% NP battery attached to it for a bit of support potential if the situation calls for it. And her NP stun effect can basically keep an enemy target locked down if they don't have some sort of debuff immunity gimmick. Having said all that, I still think Melusine is the SSR Lancer to roll for if you're looking for an ST Lancer. And this is mainly because Melusine is unique being able to switch between a single target MP and an area of effect MP. But if you fancy Skaha more, I wouldn't blame you for rolling. If you want to wait for the next time she comes around, Skaha will be on right up again in May 2025, possibly June 2026, and October 2026. Following Skaha, the limited SSR Avenger Taira no Kagekyo will be up on the banner rotation. This possessed and slightly more mature version of Ushi Wakamaru is a single target quick unit, and I think she's a really fun servant to use, and one that's well suited to soloing battles. With a stackable guts on a very short cooldown and a gimmick that makes her NP stronger when said guts has been triggered, Tyra has similar abilities to Heracles. She can also significantly raise her critical strength, which is great since her quick MP will generate a decent amount of stars for her to use. When up against servants with the Genji trait, like Raiko, Kentoki, Tomoe Gozen, and several others, Tyra can boost the damage she deals to them by a huge 200%. And to top things off for her kit, her NP has an effect that removes the target's buffs, which activates first. I think she's great to have, and I pretty much use her as a last resort option in a team's back line if I happen to be struggling with a particular challenge quest. Compared to Jolter, there are some trade-offs between the two. Tyra may not have Jolter's general NP damage output, but, but both can similarly dish out potent crits, and Tyra definitely has the advantage in overall survivability. But if the timing is just not right, then Tyra will have a couple of banners in the future, one during the 8th anniversary in July 2025, and the other in March 2026. The venerable Old Man of the Mountain comes up after Tyra. The first of the Hassans, this deadly and intimidating Gramps, is a limited SSR single target buster assassin. And among ST assassins, his general NP damage is very strong, with only Old Man Li Xuan and MHX ahead of first Hassan. His overall kit leans heavily into the instant kill gimmick, which typically can be very hit or miss, mostly miss, but with Gramps' ability to reduce the instant kill resistance of all enemies by a very large amount, I found that it's actually possible to get relatively frequent instant kills on silver tier or even the occasional gold tier enemies, especially when used in conjunction with his NP's overcharge effect of an increased death chance. And if you like playing around with that mechanic on other servants who have it, then Gramps can sort of act as a support in that regard. Aside from that, he has strong self-buffs for his attack and buster cards, can heal himself, and survive enemy NP attacks with a guts that, when triggered, will give him an offensive boost. All in all, Versus Han is definitely a strong unit. I've even seen him referred to as a berserker disguised as an assassin, which I think is kind of apt. And I find he has more than just the instant kill mechanic. So if you're looking to add a single target SSR assassin to your Caldea, then he can be a good choice. As far as direct alternatives, Kama is arguably the most highly regarded ST Assassin, and she will come around June of next year. As for First Hassan, we know that there will be future opportunities to roll for him in May of next year, possibly June 2026 and October 2026. A second limited SSR on the banner, Summer Tamamo, comes up after First Hassan. This beach-going divine fox waifu is a single-target buster unit that does really well when up against male enemies, thanks to her NP's Overcharge Damage Modifier. Summer Tamamo has a bit of utility with a party-wide attack, a crit star generation increase for male allies, and an ability to charm one target plus reduce their defense. Just earlier this year, she received a skill rank up that gave her a 30% NP battery, an extension of her crit strength and star gen buffs to three turns, and removed a stun demerit. 
That modest NP battery added to Summer Tomamo's kit really helps her compatibility with the Double Coin Sky Oberon support system. But in order to really leverage her strength, matchups versus male enemies is a must. Outside of that niche, Summer Tomamo's general NP damage falls behind a few SR ST Lancers. So in terms of recommendation, I would say only roll for her if you really like her. Otherwise, Melocene is still the SSR Lancer to go for. For those that will skip but want to roll for her, there will be other opportunities to obtain Summer Tomamo, July 2025, July 2026, and October 2026. Last up on the banner rotation is the limited SSR Alter Ego, Manana Namakalir, or probably more commonly referred to as Bazette. This Fate vs. Master turned Pseudo Servant is a pretty unique unit in the game with a quick based counter attack type NP. So, no actual direct damage, but instead, after her NP is used, Bazette gains a taunt effect and will retaliate when she receives an enemy attack or debuff. I think it's a pretty fun NP to play around with, and there have been some gimmicky battles where it really shined. Though, there are some drawbacks, like the counterattacks not being able to completely break HP bars. For more conventional abilities, Bazette has a 50% NP battery, a couple of crit strength buffs, increased effectiveness for her quick and buster cards, and a one-turn evade to offset her NP's taunt effect. Bazette is definitely not a straightforward DPS to use, but I suppose that's part of her appeal. I don't think she would be my first choice for an SSR alter ego given her quirks, but if you don't mind those quirks, then like I said, Bazette can be a fun servant to use. However, keep in mind there are a lot of good servants coming out next year with some unique aspects to their kit as well, like Draco. So even if you are interested in rolling from Bazette, perhaps saving the SQ for next year's servants would be better. Bazette is scheduled to have raid ups in February 2025 and 2026, so there are other chances to obtain her then. As a quick recap of the Thanksgiving banner rotation, Nero Bride will be up from the start of the campaign until December 2nd, Skaha from November 22nd to the 24th, Tyra's turn on raid up goes from the 24th to the 26th, The Old Man of the Mountain is on raid up from the 26th to the 28th, the 28th to the 30th is when Summer Tamamo is up, and then Bazette from November 30th to December 2nd. And that is 2024's Thanksgiving campaign and banner lineup. I'm curious to know if I was right with some of these servants causing a few of you to reconsider your summoning plans. Please let me know in the comments. As for me, I'm fortunate in that I have most of these servants on my main except for Summer Tamamo, and my alt account has her anyway along with Nero Bride, Skaha, and Tyra with no real need for the missing two. At any rate, if you are rolling on one or more of these servants, then I wish you all the best. If you enjoyed this in some way, please hit that like button to support the channel. As always, thank you for watching, and until the next one, cheers all!